Today's video is sponsored by you, the Room Sixers who have joined the Patreon page or purchased some of my music. Because of you, the videos will get better, and eventually, some cool things will be coming uh, your way. You really took an interesting path there. Uh, with, so much yeah. musical, with so much musical diversity in your background, and I know all of you have a musical diversity, uh, when can we expect a polka album from Unknown? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I don't know about a polka album, but maybe a Christmas album? If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share, and uh, yeah, let's go. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today we're going a little outside of Las Vegas with my very first intercontinental interview. Uh, to quote their about section on their website, they are divided by the Pacific Ocean, but united with a vision to create hard-hitting, melodic rock. Their debut single, Running Out, links are in the description, showcases the band's sound and promises great things to come. With members from the United States and Australia, my guests have already begun to make their mark on the hard rock scene and will hopefully be forced to be reckoned with for years to come. With a sound much like Tool, Alter Bridge, and Soundgarden, three of my favorite bands, please welcome to the channel, Unknown. Hi, guys. Hey. hey, how are you? What, hey. Two, two thirds of unknown anyway. <laughs> <laughs> He's the silent partner. <laughs> He's the one from Australia, I guess. <laughs> he hasn't rocked up yet. <laughs> He's down under, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's okay. Um, for faithful YouTube viewers of my channel, uh, you'll recognize the, ba the name of, of the band Second Echo. Casey Stickley was the singer of that band and they were on the channel. And he's also the singer for this band. So I reached out and said, hey, one other interview. Uh, he seems to be having slightly technical difficulties, but that's okay. He's last. So, hey, there he is. <laughs> hey! <laughs> it's going to be worth the promise. I, I was trying to get the audio uh, recorded so I can send it to you later. So. Oh, thank you very much, lad. Um, the other two actually have really good audio sources, so I, I don't know what's different about Australia. <laughs> <laughs> we normally don't have good internet, I can guarantee yeah, yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, wait. Yeah, I said wait, wait. All right. Um, but yes, uh, faithful viewers will know I've already done an interview with Casey with Second Echo. So, uh, so Casey, you get to be last for my my individual questions. Ha ha. Perfect. <laughs> In the meantime, um, welcome, gentlemen. If you have a drink, feel free to raise it. Pardon me while uh, I well, drink. It's uh, I know it's like a, a whole alcoholic thing here, but it's. 10 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday here in Australia. So um, we're going the real rock star route. I made myself a cup of tea with a, uh, an Australian bird. It's a nice glare on this. So, uh, uh, don't mind me while I sit here with my Room 6 shirt and my Room 6 mug, available at room6.shop. Hey. Um, so we're a real rock star here. Sorry. sorry. Okay. Um, I, my daughter's having a sleepover, so I need the whiskey. Um. <laughs> you, might, you might need something a little harder. I did bring something that's very Australian. Vegemite? Um, it's a crock piss. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Australian uh, a drink. As you can see, I had a little bit last night, so it's probably why I got a bit of red around the eyes here. But yeah, it's, uh, we, we actually hope it's alcohol. Knowing uh, it's made in far wow. north Queensland, so who knows what it is. It could actually be what the label says. Which is what? <laughs> crock piss. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah. There he is there with the hat and the, and the board shorts. Hell... <laughs> Tell me that. Tell me I can get that in America somewhere. I don't know, but I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> we have got plenty of Crocs here, awesome. so I'm assuming they can export it. <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome! All right, so um, for those, for anybody watching this interview who doesn't know you guys, thank you for watching. But also, um, tell them who you are and what you do in the band. Oh, we, I'll start off. Michael. <laughs> Well, my name's Michael. I do a bit of the production side and guitars. Um, and yeah, I've, I've actually been in bands for quite some time now. And I guess one of the things that with the name, because I'm probably going to be asked that question and the, everyone will probably point to me, but um, the name's kind of been there for a, a long time. Like 
I've had the, that was actually one of the first band names I created, Unknown actually with an O, and then Fear of the Unknown, but never really done anything with it because I just worked on other projects and yeah, I just found it hard to find members. Um, but yeah, I mean, with the band name itself, I always thought it was a very cool name, different, different than the rest. And that's, that's pretty much why the name's kind of stuck with me. I always wanted to use it. So now it has a purpose and Casey's vocals soar all over the music and Carl's, you know, guitar work and bass work as well. It's phenomenal. Carl, Carl so. he's there. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a prop, look, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, um, yeah, we didn't actually expect, I guess, for social media and the way it was released, we didn't expect it to get that much attention. Um, well, not that it's already got over 10,000 streams, so we're quite proud. Um, yeah, just for, I guess, it's all been remote and, you know, just on social media. So, yeah, it, it's really, um, yeah, it's really taken off. I'll um, handball it to Carl. Me? Um, I'm just <laughs> there. No, I'm, I'm Carl. I, uh, I'm... I'm in the band clearly for my looks, as you can tell. I don't do much else. <laughs> oh, come on, Carl. <laughs> play a bit of play a bit of bass in there, a little bit of guitar, um, and uh, usually just the general shit stirrer. So I just kind of create a little bit of havoc where I can. Um, I, I played in plenty of bands as well. Um, Mick and I have played in bands, all kinds of bands, for for many years. And in fact, we worked together many decades ago, which is where we kind of met. So we've always been kind of doing music together. So it was kind of a natural thing to kind of continue doing that with a different project um so yeah play a bit of bass play a bit of guitar and drink a bit of crock piss that's, that's pretty deal. much that's that's <laughs> my deal <laughs> all right and then casey we know you sing uh are you doing any other instrumentation on the on the project on this uh running out uh, uh single no uh which was actually kind of the fun aspect of this you know to take you know the evolution album i had my hands in everything and it was so cool to have this be a completely collaborative project and and it actually allowed me to really focus in on my vocals a lot more since i didn't have to have any other responsibilities and i actually did some stuff and hit some notes that i've never done before <laughs> because of that so it was it was kind of a cool it was it was a really it was a great learning experience right on i and remember, yeah. I remember. I remember, sorry, when Mick showed me Second Echo, like the video. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, this is really cool. Like, like. And then, then he pointed out that a lot of the members looked very similar. And, I kind of <laughs> went, oh. and then I realized they were all the same person. I went, wow, this guy's nuts. And then obviously he said, oh, yeah, that's the guy, you know, I'm in contact with for this project. And I went, wow, um, I'm going to have to step up the game here. <laughs> He's going to want to do everything. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. Handball that one off. Off you go, mate. Yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, I'm, really, it, I'm really not that much of a control freak. I really am not. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, uh, I remember during the interview with Second Echo, I, I think it was your bass player that was like, and I was, I remember wondering, where did he get all these guys with dreadlocks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly my thoughts. <laughs> um, all right, so we, go ahead. I was just going to add, um, and the, yeah, one of, the, one of the ways I, well, how I actually met Casey was through um, one of my pop acts, um, through the actual record label Tabletop Records. So Marcellus, he introduced me to Casey. And um, yeah, at that time, his track, Second Echo's track, um, sorry, I went mind blank for a second, uh, Innocent, that video clip got released. And yeah, I touched base with Casey and very easy going guy and yeah, great to work with. Yeah, and I actually reviewed th that album, Evolution, and that was the highest quality just Everything about it, not, not to gush too much, Casey, but I was surprised. I was surprised the damn thing didn't cost 50 bucks. This, I mean, it was just like nobody puts out CDs like this. Are you kidding me? So I really did appreciate being able to, to review that. Um, so normally at this point in the interview, I say, so how long have you been in Vegas? Not going to ask that. <laughs> It doesn't really matter how long you've been in Australia. <laughs> About 32 you, years. <laughs> you've been there all your life. So, yeah. Um, and I, so I, I, I had to kind of rethink the questions I'm asking. So this is going to be a little bit less uh, generic and a little bit more, hopefully, um, deep diving, as they say. So, Michael or Mick. Yeah. You were childhood pen pals with Johnny Cash? <laughs> Yeah, I was a big uh, country fan growing up. 
And um, yeah, I actually used to write letters and that, and I actually got a response back, and it was crazy. Um, yeah, just a big fan growing up of country music. And then, I don't know, from country, it kind of evolved to metal. As you do. <laughs> yeah, as you do. It went to metal. Um, yeah, I guess from country music, it went. the first metal band I actually listened to was Ramstein. So, you know, it went to like real industrial metal. And That's then so all funny. sorts of... <laughs> I'm sorry, I was, I was literally singing Du Hast in my kitchen before yeah. this interview. <laughs> you know what they say? Johnny Cash is a gateway drug to Ramstein. That's... That's well, he, he's that. the gateway drug to, to Nine Inch Nails because <laughs> yeah. of Hurt right. <laughs> and, and a sound garden because of Rusted Cage. And right. that leads you down the path eventually to uh, Romstein. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so mm. uh, Mick, your, your past project with Adam Spicer, um, Something Left of Center, took, yep. in, took influences from bands such as Jamiroquai and Daft Punk. And, yeah. and you, you have been quoted as saying you went from country to metal to jazz to blues. <laughs> like you really took an interesting path there uh, with, so much yeah. musical, with so much musical diversity in your background. And I know all of you have a musical diversity. Uh, when can we expect a polka album from unknown? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I don't know about a polka album, but maybe a Christmas album. <laughs> Papa. <laughs> Oh, get that get that children's um, album out. <laughs> it, it's really interesting because, like, you know, I've I've also got the production aspect, so I've kind of always been behind the scenes as well, doing a lot of audio production, which I think that helps as well because it really makes you appreciate all styles of music. Um, so yeah, I mean, that being said, you know, it also makes you appreciate different styles and how to mix different styles, and also it makes you appreciate, you know just all aspects of instrumentation, percussion. So, I mean, for me, I, I think um, hard rock is a good dividing line, you know, can grab a lot of audience, audiences in the sense of, you know, I know you've got your pop where it's more acclaimed to people listening to your top 40 music, but I think the good thing with Unknown is it bridges that gap. So, you know, catching catchy melodies, hard-hitting riffs, Hard hitting drums and trying to keep it organic as well. So I think that's that's the that's the special part about Unknown, and that's what we'll probably keep on doing with future releases. And I could definitely hear that in just even this one single. I can be like, "There's more under the hood." You know, there's a lot more to to come that you're going to be surprising people and and not going to let yourself get pigeonholed too much. Mm. And I think um, <clears throat> even with Unknown, like, because, you know, we received a lot of feedback and I think it was a pretty bold statement having a long intro. But that being said, I think it sets the scene for what, you know, the band's going to create and right. f for the future. And it actually, it, 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 as I, you know, dived down a little bit and, and started learning more a bit about you guys, it suddenly all became clear when I looked at Carl's history. <laughs> and I'm going <laughs> gonna, gonna to jump over to Carl now. Uh, yeah. So how far pretty, how far back did you look, my eyes? That's a bit worrying. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, pretty boy. <laughs> um, there's still a warrant out. For, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so your background is in melodic and symphonic metal uh, groups with, with you know Divine Ascension, and I think you were also in something Left of Center, correct? Yeah, yeah that was the first album we did together, uh, Mick and I, and we were oh, in oh, that. Yeah. So yeah, I, can't, I got um, the timing wrong a little bit. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. So yeah, we, did, we've been making music together for, for a very long time. In fact, we, we only started slightly left because um, we were looking for a singer for our other metal project. And remember Christian came along and we went, yeah. he's got a voice, like he's got a good voice, but it's not, not working with that kind of heavier sound. Let's write some pop tunes. And then before you knew it, it was on the radio um, and all that. Yeah, Jazz. I don't. I don't remember mm. the name of the tune right now, but um, I did hear a little bit of a, a divine ascension. And as I was listening, I was like, I, I, I can. I'm hearing the influence in running out. Like I definitely hear. Like you can't get rid of that once you start in. in you know, in doing that kind of music, everything you have to complicate everything basically. Yep. <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> musically and yeah. Um, now, how does that that type of music affect what you're doing with unknown and and the future plans? Have Have you guys already had uh, you got more music recorded or is, is it still like you're, you're just one at a time for, for unknown. Sorry. Yeah. For unknown. Um, we're, we're in the process of writing some, some more music. Um, I think we all realized when we started the project that there was, we were all involved in other projects, quite active projects. So 
that was one of the things that we said we we kind of do this when we have time, um, and we'll make it work around obviously time time zone differences and uh, other other commitments. So we've got other material in the works, just kind of throwing it out there. But there's no real set deadlines. I don't think there's no. We're just going to do what we want when we want, how we want. Cheers. That's awesome. Uh, and, and kudos to all you guys, honestly, uh, because the production value on it does not sound like it's, you know, two different continents. It, it, it doesn't sound like you, okay, here's, now go do your part and record it and then send it back kind of thing. Um, Casey. Yeah. So unknown seems a little bit heavier than second echo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, th it, that was the thing. Like, just the font alone <laughs> of the band name, I was just like, oh, I think he's make I think he's taking a left. He's making a departure a little bit. Um, has the change in singing style affected your voice and your overall, like, you know, vocal health? Um, I don't know that it's only changed in as much as it's, it's stretched me in some ways, but not, I don't, really approach the unknown stuff a whole lot differently um from a vocal standpoint um you know i try to i definitely try to stretch myself for example with this with this tune uh michael sent it to me in one key and i started coming up with the melody and i was like yeah this is what i want but it was it was just like a half step too high and so i sent back i was like what do you think about lowering this a half step and so we we tried it down lower and it just it just didn't have the same power to it. And so I was like, all right, give me, give me a, a couple extra weeks here. Let me, let me see what I can do, you know? So, Suck it um, up. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so from that aspect, it was, it was, uh, it was a great challenge to be able to, uh, try something new that way, but it's really the same, you know, I, I'm a very, um, I like super hooky melodic stuff, you know? And so I tried to just bring that same thing. Uh, which I think works really cool uh, over top of the uh, over top of the music. For example, you know, I, I I grew up in the '90s, listening to a lot of grunge and stuff. But I went through this phase in the early 2000s where Seven Dust was my band, man. I I Morgan Rose, the drummer, and and Lejean, the singer. I mean, like that. I I I think I went to see them like a dozen times over the course of five or six years. I mean, I just love them. And, and that's, it reminds me a lot of that, is that, you know, super heavy, aggressive, metal, metalish rock, but just this really awesome, you know, Lejean can be almost like an R&B singer over top of it sometimes, you know, so yeah. I, lo I love that, that interplay between those two styles. Yeah, I, I whenever I think of Seven Dust, uh, my brain automatically, I'm probably wrong, probably, feel free to yell at me in the comments, um, <laughs> I'm, I kind of lump them in with like Volbeat. And with Avenge Sevenfold, and I know that's not even like remotely right, but um, no, I, I'm with you. It, it's one of those. Uh, they're one of those bands that you you can't help but like. It jazzes you up a little bit. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah. all right. Uh, have you ever been to Australia? I have never been to Australia. That's it's. Uh, it's definitely long way away. A little bit. Well, it's one of my places that I'd love to go for sure. It's on my bucket list for sure. Yeah, make sure you try the Vegemite, right, guys? Yeah, that and the Tim Tams <laughs> and and the crock piss. You got a crock piss, yes. Yeah. And you got to watch. You got to watch out for the drop bears as well. Yeah, the drop bears. <laughs> Dangerous little buggers. <laughs> um, I my my family has kind of become. I don't know. I know what the, what Anglophile is. It's, it's someone who loves the whole English culture kind of thing. I don't know what the uh, equivalent is for Australia, Australia files or something. But uh, thanks to the Norris nuts, they're <laughs> they're they're huge fans. And every now and then, my my wife won't even realize she's speaking in an Australian accent. <laughs> That's good. Does it sound like we have accents here? Because I never know. Because I only hear what I what I oh, hear, yeah. and I'm used. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, I, st I stole that off the Australian Top Gear. <laughs> Gross. Anyway, um, so that's the uh, the Q and A part of the the, the individual Q and A part of it. You survived. Um, let's talk a little bit more music related things. And to the group, what was your earliest musical influence? What was that one influence that was like? I want to make that. I want to sound like that, or I want to do that, or I want to learn this style of music. Whoa. 
Good question. Who's going first? That's why I ask it. Well, I remember listening to the Wiggles when I was really young. <laughs> toot, 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 chug a chug a big red car. That's still a classic in my eyes. Uh, <laughs> even the remake version you know, is pretty. But uh, I don't know. I, after that, probably um, maybe listening to early The Who or Deep Purple when my old man used to you know, crank that in the car or around. Even mum used to play a bit of Elvis. Um, I used to listen to that and go, well, that's, that's just got groove. It's just, it's just something that hits you inside. And then later on, I kind of got into your more heavier rock, you know, Van Halen. You get into ACDC, of course. Being Australia, you kind of have to. It's, it's part of the curriculum here. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then I go into the heavier stuff. I wasn't going to bring up ACDC, but okay. <laughs> oh, you kind of have to, didn't I? I just released a new album this week, so. Yeah, I, yeah, I saw that. Single. Yeah, what yeah, the yeah. hell? Like, yeah. h- how? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, so they're, well, they've at least the same kind of album for the last 50 years, so I guess it's... I mean, yeah, yeah uh, the fair news, it's it's like it is. It works. Like, I wonder what they're going to sound like this time. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what you're getting, which is it's a good thing, really. Yeah, it still cracks me up that they they kind of were are, are considered a blues band almost. Yeah, not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, next. All uh, right, I'll probably say yeah. Back to Johnny Cash. I mean, that's what I started listening to as a young kid. So. From there, it evolved. I mean, as I said, Ramstein, and probably I think for influences would probably be Metallica. Um, that and Justice album, it's just yeah, something sonically yep. about that album. Um, just I don't know. Whenever I used to hear the just the dual sonic guitars, hard hitting, I was like, no, nah, I, I wanna I wanna try and get to that level, and that's what something I always used and aimed as an achievement. And then yeah, t- towards my um, Teenage years, I was just like playing through all the albums, like all the Ramstein albums, all the Metallica albums, and yeah, just always looking for something more. And I think for me, my favorite record of all time would probably be um, Death, The Sound of Perseverance. Mm. Just the quality, and you know, I'm a big fan of death metal as well. And, and that band for me set the benchmark quite high. It was around that time that Johnny Cash stopped replying to his letters. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so, Casey, just just to re- revisit old ground, uh, what's your earliest musical influence? So, since we've already done this once, I want to I want to take this a slightly different direction, Josh. Uh, so, I, I was doing an interview not too terribly long ago, and somebody asked me a really interesting question, and it was your musical influences. But what were the musical influences when you didn't realize they were musical influences? So, like when you were so young. You know, and I thought that was a great question because I, I can always go back and say, yeah, the first time I heard Nirvana or Chris Cornell or whatever. But um, I specifically remember uh, riding around with my mom. She'd be in the car running errands and she'd have the oldie station on and she'd be listening to like the Shirelles and old um, uh, Jim Croce and all this old stuff. And it was very much this 50s and 60s pop stuff. And I really think that that's, as I look back, a lot of my sensibilities for songwriting, like I'm, I'm, I've always been a sucker for that, for that hook, that really almost poppy, almost cheesy, corny hook sometimes, you know? And so right. I, I kind of go back to that, you know, to, man, there's so many of those old tunes, like, uh, um, I forget who does like, uh, my little runaway or run, run, run. Like, like, I, I, like as soon as you said it, I can't remember. Yeah. But you know, it's like that era of music where it was like, you know, just every song on the radio was just like this really, it just got stuck in your head. They're just ear candy. And so I, that, that's one element here recently. I looked at it, I was like, oh yeah, I guess that stuff really probably had a bigger influence on me than I, than I thought, you know. Nice. All right. Uh, well, we are on to our last question. You made it. Hey. Yeah. So, and it's a question I like to ask musicians. I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip my usual. I, I like to slide that, that one interview question of how do you describe your musical style? I'm not going to bother with that. But <laughs> that's the, the, hate, try it. the hated elevator pitch you know, question. But um, last question. And, and Casey, this will be a repeat for you. Okay. So, and bear in mind, um, it looks like we have about eight minutes before this meeting ends because <laughs> because it's more than three people on it and zoom likes to limit you to 40 minutes 
So there we go. Sorry. I'm not paying for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon down in the links. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so let's say uh, you're, you're a new, uh, you got a new musician. You're talking to a new musician, someone who's, I want to be like you. What, what's one piece of advice that you would give them to do what you do? Don't do it. <laughs> I knew it was going to be you. I knew one of you was going to do it. Uh, no, no, all right. Let's. I'll, I'll go serious. Serious answer. If I, if someone was going to uh, ask me uh, that question, I'd probably say, if you're doing it for fame and fortune, you've already failed. Yep. Wow. That's Good. that. That's un, un, surprisingly deep. Yeah. <laughs> you get you get one deep answer for the entire interview. Nice. Um, Michael, you got to do it for the bitter enjoyment. The bitter enjoyment. Yeah. There's a song title or an yeah, album, it's... an album title. Watch out! New single coming soon. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here on Room Six. <laughs> the bitter enjoyment. Yeah. I like that. Um, it, it has a it, look. It always has its up and ups and downs. And you know, as Carl said, you've been in pop bands where you know you've had that little radio play and that spot play on commercial radio. It's fantastic, but comes at a price and obviously everything else is, as well that comes in the way you know there's more fees involved there's more you know licensing and mechanics involved and then it, it doesn't become about music anymore it becomes about management and you know right. feel like you're an accountant <laughs> a brief aside to any new musicians who don't know this it is a record business and unfortunately the more popular you get the more business you got to do um the people that you'll see that really loving what they're doing aren't necessarily making money at it. <laughs> it's a sad, sad truth, but uh, mm -hmm. hopefully you can find that, that in between. All right. Um, I, was, I was just going to add one more thing just um, with that, you know, like with unknown, a lot of it's all self-sustained. So we built the website, we make the merchandise, you know, so the mechanics yeah. that come with it. Yeah. The more you can do yourself, the less you have to rely on other people and the less you have to compromise to deal with their whatever. Um, yeah. Great. Casey, you want to wrap up for us? Sure. Um, so my, I would say anyone who wants to, to do music, think long and hard if, if, and really, really count the cost of it. And if it's, and if you're at the end of it, if you're convinced, then don't give up no matter what. Um, and ultimately, I like what Carl said. If you're in it for the fame and fortune, um, you've already you've already failed. Um, I I try to look at it as this is this is my purpose. This is what I was created for. And to me, the evidence of that is when I can unite with two guys from another continent that I've never met before. I mean, we we have no idea each other's religious beliefs political beliefs i mean we, we've never talked about any of that and yet we can churn out a song like running out i mean that that gives me not only hope in my life but hope for humanity <laughs> and right for music i mean all of that stuff and 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 yes it's it's super hard and somebody asked me the other day like are you happy with what you're doing and, and it's, that's a weird question because i don't i don't know that i would say i'm happy but i've never been more fulfilled if that makes sense. Yes. I've never been more fulfilled in my life. And, and it's because of experiences like this. Yep. I have to step back sometimes and remind myself why I'm dealing with all the YouTube stuff. Yeah. Like, why do I put myself through some of the things I go through to get these videos out? Because it's not fun editing. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it, it's not fun sitting there going like, Oh, I need, a, I need a video. What, I don't, I'm, I'm out of, I'm out of ideas. What do I do? Yeah. What do I do? And you don't want to be like, well, I don't want to be, I don't want to just like do something I don't believe in kind of thing yeah there's plenty of that content out there already so all right well we are almost we're in the, the the wee hours of the interview here so gentlemen thank you very much for waking up this early it's like 10 a.m in australia um and and casey thank you very much for joining us oh, um goodness. i'm gonna get back over here for to, to to finish up and then we'll say goodbye so check the uh the, the description there'll be a link to the um the single running out it is awesome Keep an eye out for these guys. I'll have links for all their social media and everything. And in the meantime, really, really appreciate you coming. Remember to be amazing. If you want to see more videos like this, click up here. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please click down here. And don't forget to ring the bell. 
And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Say bye, guys. See you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Ba -da -bum, ba -da -bum. There we go. <laughs>